Welcome, I'm Ray Sierra. This is TheImagination.com, Volume 6, painting realistic portraits on black t-shirts. Today's featured artist is Ariel Colon, new up-and-coming artist who's killing them out there. I'm going to pass it over to him. What's up, guys? My name is Ariel Colon from AirImagination.com. Today I'll be showing you how to paint realistic portraits on black t-shirts. I'll be using Kratex Wicked Paints and Kratex Originals. They're excellent for this type of work. I'll also be using Kawada HPCH, excellent gun for detail. Stay tuned. So my first step will be reducing my colors. I'm going to use a Wicked Reducer. You don't have to put too much in, but just a significant amount. It would be good to have some mixing cups, you know, something disposable. I was to use. Um, also, I'll be using a White Wicked. It's a don't put too much in, but just put a good enough. Make sure you put the reducer before you actually place the paint in. It'll mix a lot better and it'll be less of a hassle. Um, to just pour, to be on a quite exact measurement, you could put about 20 drops of reducer and about 10 drops of wicked paint. That'll be just enough to get it started. Make sure you mix it well. Use a wooden stick or something just to mix it well. Make sure you mix it just right just to get the significant flow. So when you put it through your gun, it flows correctly and you won't have any spits or any problems whatsoever. This is how we set up the shirt. What we do is we grab an Opeg Wicked and we spray it on top. Base it white. Not too much, but just a good amount. Let it heal before you heat press it. Then heat press it with a Teflon sheet. Anywhere from 250 to 300 degrees. You can also use an iron. As long as you have a Teflon sheet, you'll have all the furs and all the hairs of the shirt pressed down. That's what you need. Afterwards, we'll use a projector to project our image. Make sure you capture the most important prominent features of the face, like the nose, the mouth, the position of the eyes as well. It's the most important things. Um, and any significant details like wrinkles or whatnot. Oh, let's get ready to paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my reduced paint. I'm going to pour it in a little bit. What I like to pour in is just a little bit, not too much, because I like to economize my paint and you'll actually see how much you use in such a little amount that you put in your gun because believe me it spreads with the reducer so now we're going to start on the left eye what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create textures within really complicated small areas it's very simple most people think it's more difficult than it seems what you actually do is when you pull back the airbrush you just pull it back a little bit not too much you want to pull it back just enough and keep the consistent flow of air it creates a form of manipulation towards well, create convincing textures or wrinkles within the eye and where the actual dynamic lighting is hitting the face. And um, when it comes up to wrinkles in certain areas like this, you also want to just not keep it in one certain section, but also drag it. And what could also help when you press down the shirt, how there's spaces in between the little hairs pushed down from the Teflon sheet when you heat press it. If you actually look closely, there are spaces in between. You could use that to help you manipulate the textures on the t-shirt. It will help for wrinkles and whatnot. Don't really worry about specific textures yet. I'll go into that a bit later. It's also good to go and overlap some of the textures that you did, but don't overdo it because you don't want to fill in all the spaces that you did. There'll be certain prominent highlights within the face and the feature that really bring it out. So make sure you capture some of those distinctive lights that hit the face, especially in the wrinkled areas. You want to make sure it's not too linear. You want to still keep the rugged, dotted feel that we're doing when creating these textures. And don't be afraid to color in between the spaces that you actually see. You have to really look at it, but you can't actually see there are certain spaces in there that you could just fill in and still help you create, you know, the textures and the technique. Now what I'm doing is moving into the nose and bottom area, the outer area of the nose. This is where some, some things start to get dark and dimmer, so you won't see as much detail. You want to do the, lectures, the textures less there. You can really keep your lighting in place and show that 
realistic soft edge because what we're doing now is when we do the textures we are doing very sharp but we're moving at such a such a fast pace that it still keeps some sort some form of subtlety to it and some of the, some form of realism has a lot of subtlety to it and you know to have great lighting and to capture all these effects you do need All right, so now as you see, we're moving into the real subtle area, the real blurred out area. What you want to do is, you still want to do the texture technique, but you want to pull back your gun so the actual textures will be more subtle, they won't be as sharp, and it will create a blended flow into the actual portrait. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the left section of his face. I'm going into the blurry area. And basically what you want to do you want to leave more spaces open, but still use the same technique and pull the back gun, pull the gun back more to really create that subtle, blended look, but still create convincing textures. It's like subtle textures, basically. Basically, what we were doing, just keep it lighter and pull it back away from the shirt. All right, so now that you have a significant amount complete, we want to really look at certain areas and make sure they're accurate and correct. I'm seeing this pretty well. Of course, it's not going to be perfect, but the way to simulate these textures is to have a certain imperfection of how you're handling your tool. It doesn't have to be super steady. You don't have to be very... You don't have to be very uptight with it. You don't have to be very aggressive. You could just go with the flow. You know, and have, be patient and be confident. You'll do just fine, I'm sure. Um, since we have this area basically complete, I'm going to blur this area down here a little more, and then I'll move on towards the nose, and then the right section of the face. Still want to keep it subtle, especially when we're going down here because it's much darker in this area. A lot of warm lights, so let's keep it subtle. So what we're doing now, I'm going back into the nose, adding more value, more white basically, bring it out more. Don't be afraid to put too much white down when doing this step. Or to mess up. I mean you can't it's, you can't really do a mistake. It could always be washed over. Have confidence when you're doing it. Don't be scared. I know most people, most artists are starting off, usually get scared and not as confident as it should be. Just go with it, man. So what I'm doing is, I'm moving to the right side of the cheek. I'm gonna finish this right uh, nostril and uh, get to it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is move into right in between the nose and the upper lip area, basically. There's a couple wrinkles there. And basically how I achieve these wrinkles, it's like basically really skinny dagger strokes. And then I go back and I do that squiggly motion that I usually do to create some texture over top of the dagger strokes that I'm doing within the wrinkles. It creates a really convincing look.
It's also good on your free time to really study skin and how it looks like and how it forms. It really, really helps with painting portraits. Because sometimes you can actually just add those hints of skin in and some highlights and some wrinkles in certain areas and it actually makes the portrait a stronger piece. <laughs> now basically what I'm doing is a shaky hand. It's the same thing we went through before with the textures. I'm just moving it extremely fast so it can catch in certain areas that it needs to be catched. And basically in certain open areas in here that haven't been hit with it. And what this does, it helps me move around the area quickly and still able to hit that area. So I know I covered it with this texture. And when doing this, it's also good to pull away from the shirt. Creates that blended, subtle technique instead of just washing over. Because they'll get to a point where you'll do it so in depth that you won't see it. The human eye basically won't see it. It gets that in depth. You know, especially even if you have a high resolution photograph of the shirt to Jackson the painting or the piece. There, what I'm gonna do is move into the right side of the face. I'm probably gonna start on the eye and work my way down from there. It's always good to have your image um, to eye level like where you're actually copying from. You know, have it exactly there so you can actually see the reference right next to it. It'll be better. It's best not to, it's best to have it there instead of having your image away from your actual piece that you're working on because it'll create less confusion and it'll just be so much more consistent if you actually focus on one focal point area of the face. Um, so what we're doing now, I worked under the bottom lip of the eye, adding textures here and there, making it come together. So basically what I'm doing now is moving towards the bottom, the cheek area. I got done with the top eyelid and basically the eye inside. I moved down towards this area and I'm going to grow back in the subtle. There's more shades and shadow towards the right side of the face. So it'll keep, it'll stay more subtle. It won't be as much detail as the right, but it'll still be a significant amount. Painting, always remember to check your cup. Make sure you have some paint in there. Hey, right. give it that faded look. Now we're going back into the subtle area. All right, now we move up to the forehead. Um, build up some textures up here and um, wrap it up. Now when, um, now when you're painting, don't be afraid to tag it. You know, don't ever have that fear factor like you're going to mess up. First, we're just doing the white washes. So you don't really need to be too perfect or precise. Just capture certain textures that actually mean. When creating textures, I usually move my hand at a rapid pace doing small squiggly dagger strokes. It works well. I work throughout that portion of the portrait that I'm doing. Also, I don't saturate or saturate it too much and 
Don't stay in one area. You definitely want to move around, spread out. Also, don't cover your whole portrait with textures because there's certain areas of the portraits that will have shadow and shading, dark areas. In those dark areas, there's no point in putting textures because they'll get covered with dark pigment in the long run in your process of painting. Also, it's good to uh, have certain key points and areas when you're working on a certain portion of the portrait to fill out that area. You don't have to make, you don't have to add texture throughout that whole area. You can just step back and lay an overspray on top and it'll bring all those textures together. If you have any more questions, you can reach us at info at airimagination.com. And then it also helps to spray on top to bring all the uh, textures and all the manipulation together. Um, also, when starting off with certain sections, it may seem like certain textures and strokes look somewhat like crosshatch like a crosshatch design. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's basically grabbing dagger strokes and crossing them in between each other. Not keeping them too parallel, but just crossing them in between each other, creating. And then it's also good afterwards, you can grab the texture that I showed earlier and throw it on top and it'll give it more, uh, it'll, it'll give it more of a convincing look for a texture. Also remember, subtlety is the key to achieving realism. You know, you don't always want those hard lines. You don't always want to make it look cartoony. You want to keep sometimes, you want to make it soft sometimes. You want to keep it subtle, you know. That way you could grab the person that's viewing the actual photo or shirt or whatever it may be. And, you know, show it, it brings so much more meaning and emotion towards the picture you're doing. And it brings the audience closer to what you're actually painting. So now we're getting towards a section where we're going to do the blur and the blend like we did earlier. And like I said, just keep the same consistency in the gun, but just pull it back to create that subtle flow, that subtle motion of the gun. And remember to clean your tip and check if you have paint as well, because I know after a while, I don't want to forget. Right now, I basically wrapped it up. But now I'm just going back into the eyes and filling in the filling in the white areas in the eyes, and I'm just going into the highlights in the pupil, just to reference it. We're not really going to go into that. Just a moment. I'll be in the next step. All right. So before the step is done, just go back and make sure you didn't miss any real prominent highlights. You know, just real prominent ones, the ones that really stand out. And um, I think I got the overall piece done, all the highlights down. So I'm going to move on to the next step. So this, the next step is we're going to grab out of the bottle colors and wash over the white wash that we already did before. 
and what it will do is capture some of the highlights, the main proper highlights and uh, real dominant textures that we did and um, bring them forward. And the spaces that we left, the spaces that we left without highlights and without any real um, light towards it will be pushed back, so I'll create that depth. These are, um, I'm using transparent and opaque Kratex colors right out of the bottle, no reducing. So don't be so hard on it. You know, just do it easily. You don't want to go over what you did. You just basically want to mist on top of it to create that real subtle way look. I'm almost done with this wash. It's not so effective now because you really have to let it sit. And there's nothing wrong with going over it, overlapping a couple times. Just make sure you're not too uh, too hard on it. Keep subtle. Now I'm done with that valley. I'm going to grab. Seems like there's a little yellow on his face, so I'm gonna grab some sun sunrise transparent paint from Kratex. It's very good for to create like the subtle yellows. You know, inside certain pigments, and it looks it looks really well. And as you can see, it lays down very prominent on the white highlights that I did. That's good. That's what we need. Don't be afraid, but um, also keep a note that uh, don't use it so so aggressively, especially colors like this that attract so much to the white because then you'll get too much of a yellow tint, especially with the yellow I'm using. It's, uh, sometimes it can dissolve the energy you're working for, and then you have to go back and cover up. Now what I'm gonna do is grab some light brown and bring it in certain areas just browns around certain features of the wrinkles and skin. So it's basically where the light is hitting. I'm not really overlapping it around the whole image. I'm just going to grab the light brown and put it in a certain prominent spots where it's really dark. Basically around the blur that we did, basically one of the darkest parts of the whole image. And don't be afraid to be so this, it's alright if you get overspray on certain areas that you're not supposed to. We're just going to go back and overlap it. So it's fine. Doesn't have to be perfect. We'll go back later and fix little defects and mistakes that we did. sure when you uh, have paint in your gun, you always want to use up all the paint that's in your gun. It's not best to throw it away, you know, just to economize. Now here is what I'm using, the Wicked Driscoll Tone. It's very good. Gives it a real, real subtle, real realistic effect. Now as you see with this wash, 
all the values that I laid down before are actually coming in together. And that's basically what you want to achieve for color washing step that I have right here. It, it, it's very, um, it works very well. It's efficient and it keeps, you know, it keeps your mind track of colors. And there's nothing wrong with mixing. I mean, personally, me, I prefer using out of bottles because I believe some of the, because I already know my color wheel. There's nothing wrong with studying the color wheel, study it, get into it, and study about skin textures and really just study on how that works and environment works around you and like the way certain expressions create certain things because they'll really help, especially when doing realistic portraits with high-end detail like this. I mean, the best, the best model for studying all that is yourself, you know? Look in the mirror. Look and study how things, how things create, how textures, how wrinkles work. So I'm about to wrap it up and just laying in more of the value. Make sure I didn't miss any of the highlights. Now it's all right. It's overlapping the highlights that you already have, that you really placed inside. It's fine. Those highlights that we really placed in certain areas are really bright. Will pop out regardless. So we're gonna go back into those later on and really pop them out. And when you lay it down, lay it down softly. Don't be too aggressive. I actually see that the paint sticks a lot better when you lay it down softer and harder, especially on t-shirts. So now that we're done with that wash, the reason I left the lips blank is because um, this is more of a yellowish tint. As I see from this photograph, the lips have more of a pinkish tint so in order to achieve that easier and quicker, um, less time consuming, it's best just to wash a pink on top of that and we'll come back with more white washes to really bring out some of the subtleties and highlights of the lips and just the features in the face itself. Now for the lips, I'll just use Kratex Hot Pink. Just wash it over. It's pretty phenomenal actually. Works really well for uh, washes. Not to be that prominent, you know. You can spray it around the face if you see certain pink areas. Like I know right under his eyelids, it's a lot of pink. One of the keys here. One of the very realistic. Pink is definitely one of those colors that help. I'm gonna go on with my darks and then I'll pull out my lights. So now after we're done with the color wash, we basically got all the colors down, we're gonna start off with bringing out the darks. So what I'm gonna use is a light brown, bring out some of the more prominent darks, and I'll explain that in a bit. I always like to start off with the darkest. The darkest in this image so far, besides the actual hair, is the nostril. So in the nostrils, basically where we're going to go back and just fill in all the darks that we have, basically all the open spaces that we left before. And I go with a light brown because I like to have like a pre-shadow first. And sometimes it creates a realistic, actually when you have a shadow on the skin, it either has a blue tone towards it or it has a brown, yellowish tone, tone towards it. So it's just creating a more realistic effect when you overlap it with a darker color. And keep it subtle. Don't don't uh, be too aggressive. So all the darks will just go back with the light brown and overlap. Um, make sure you don't put the dark brown around any real prominent highlights that were still showing through over the washed colors that we put on top.
You could also bring some of the wrinkles out when doing this. Make them more prominent. I'm going in the eyelid here, adding some darks. I'm basically misting a lot of the time. Only time I really go in hard and create fine line and into into the darks is when um they're like it's real prominent in the picture. So it's like real dark, like the darker spots. Basically, what you really need to capture. Most people will actually use this approach and do the hair with it as well. I'm gonna use that approach and I'll explain why in a bit. Make sure uh, your tip doesn't dry. Be aware. I could definitely clog the gun up and have some spin going on. I don't want the gun to spit. So yeah, when we get more in towards the blending and like the actual blur of the actual image, just keep it subtle like if we were washing at the last step. Make sure your image is always right next to the actual piece that you're working on so you can have them both aligned together. That way your image will turn out, you won't get frazzled, it, it, your image will turn out better and it won't look so deformed, it won't turn out deformed. We're just washing it. The only real prominent dark areas is the only ones we're really going in and really defining. If anything else, we're just going in and washing. Alright, it's always good to double check your image. Make sure what you're copying is right. Sometimes your eyes play with you. It might seem like something is actually not. Especially like a texture or a crease or something. Now what I'm doing here is um, I'm going back with the technique that I showed you to reference some dark areas. I'm putting the forehead on the right. Take a little dot. Just use it lightly and pull it back. Just keep the same consistency like I showed you before. Alright, I think I'm done with the brown now. I think just about wrapped it up there. Now I'm going on to the next step. Stay tuned. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the dark brown. I'm gonna lay them down in the light brown values and just bring them out a little more. Not too prominent, but just really bring them out more and create um create more textures with the dark brown, make it look very convincing. As always, I always start out with the darkest part of the face, which is nostril, the inside of the nostril. The dark brown is one of those colors 
that will um, throw your image off sometimes, especially if you, you don't want to make your image look too dirty, is basically what I'm saying. don't have to worry about is um you still haven't laid your highlights down remember that don't forget so don't make the image too dark in certain areas just so the highlights can pop out keep them subtle keep them tight once we have the highlights in is when everything will pop out and really look extremely convincing And this is straight out the bottle, dark brown. I'm not, um, I didn't regulate the MAC valve, I didn't touch it. All regular pressure, about 40 to 60 PSI. So what I'm going to now is basically with uh, dark brown, just going in the lips, defining certain areas. Bringing some of the darks out. Don't bring too much of the darks out in the lips. Because we still have to add another value in there, and I'll add that in the last step. Let me bring out the highlights. And take your time. I know there's some artists out there that have a problem with line work and but just taking too long on a shirt. There's nothing wrong with taking too long. There's nothing wrong with having enough time. I mean, believe me, taking your time and learning this method will really advance your skills. It'll make you much better at portraits, at detail, at seeing things differently. Now certain areas like this where I put the light brown and it doesn't seem too prominent, too dark, there's nothing wrong with going over it, but just keep it extremely subtle. Don't OD it, because then you'll have that dirty, washy look and you don't want that. Now down here, as you see, I'm going in with the textures. Do the same thing I talked before. Let's go up and pull back when you go up with the actual gun and build more texture on top of each other. Pull the gun back to create that illusion that when it looks faded. All right, so basically I'm moving down to the neck. Um, um, some of the darks here, some of the darks are very subtle, they're not really detailed, but they still some have some detail formality towards it, but it's still very, very subtle. That's what you want to keep when you do this. Subtleness is the key to realism, remember that. You know, a lot of people use frisket, I mean, I'm all freehand, but a lot of people use frisket and all these other elements to really make some stuff pop. But it takes away from the realism, I believe, towards the sense because it's, some things are just too sharp. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong, but not all the time and not for every little thing. I mean, you know, of course it's going to take a while to get used to the gun and the way it works and to have a really st hand, steady hand towards it. But it's worth the wait when you're able to achieve things like this at such a fast pace with all freehand. Without using any real shortcuts or mixed mediums, you know. I'm going towards the left side. It gets more subtle because it goes back into the blur, so. 
we're going to do that effect that we've been following earlier on. Same effect. Same effect that we did with the white, just with the dark. Crease that illusion of detail, but subtle detail. So you want to capture. Actually, um, in certain photographs, certain lights and, and um, shades may look flat and dark for the sense because, I mean, as a photograph lens, it does play tricks with you. You know, you doesn't some of the light and some of the way it's actually handled is not like it is in real life. At least not for a regular camera. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back, spray lightly over top of what I did on the bottom of the neck. You just want to make sure because this is basically the last point for this as far as it goes with the dark brown. We're not going to come back with the dark brown and mess with it any longer. I'm going to come back with a different pigment and fill that in later. And I tend sometimes to jump around the portrait because staying in one place for too long, you'll get a little bored. You don't want to do that because then it'll turn you off of what you're doing. So, I mean, if it makes it any better, just jump around the porch and work on different things. Just make sure you're using the same pigment, same medium, and you're able to use it in that area in the portrait. I'm also using, um, Dark brown, transparent from Kratex, straight out the bottle. No reducer. Kratex does a great job with these pigments. They work excellent on any material. I think that should do it for the neck. So I finished the bottom section of the of the head, finished the neck, finished the chin. I'm gonna work my way on the right section. There's not too much darks here, so I'm gonna just hurry up and fill that in. Then I'll work my way up on the left section again. I'm not intentionally doing the hair. I'm just creating a mist of an outline of where the actual line is. And you could probably create a light, light mist on the edge of the head. Now I'll move towards the left side. So now I've decided, since I finished the bottom, I'm going to work my way up to the nose. See, I missed a few spots. So right, you're going to miss stuff here and there. As long as you get the basic contour lines and the basic shades and the things that you really need and create the essence of the portrait and that's basically all you need man I'm just laying a line down basically a light line to define where it starts and where it's at and work my way into the ear do a little shading on the hair lift it up keeping it subtle in the left eye now referencing some dark parts where I laid down the dark um, the light brown earlier Double check always on your image. Make sure what you're following is right. Not too much. I'm 
when I'm um, doing darks and washing over, be careful because we didn't lay highlights in yet. So your value might be too dark. So don't lay it down too dark. Just be careful what you're doing and pay attention. This is all out of the bottle. Peg does a great job with reducing their colors from the factory. Works very well right off hand. Lay sometimes your own strands in here and there. Just keep the same form. Once you have the same form, you'll be straight. Just have a consistent thin line and pull back the trigger just a little to get that fine line. You don't really have to be necessarily steady. Because remember, you want to keep that imperfect flow. So that's the first style. We got that out the way with the dark brown. We're gonna move on to the left one. First, I'm gonna start off with the eye and put the eyelashes in the eye and then I move my way up to the eyebrow. And just take your time, there's no rush. Once you get used to this technique and the way it works, you'll work it much more efficient. Work up to the eyebrows. We start off with the dominant strands. And if it's a bunch of dominant strands, then just create your own, but still manipulate what they have there. You don't have to sit there for hours and replicate every every strand of hair perfectly. All you want to do is capture the manipulation so you can fool the human eye. Make it look very convincing. So what I'm doing now, I'm going back and I'm bringing some of the pigments out, some of the flesh tone, making it more warmer, making it feel warmer, more realistic, bringing more values together, especially the light brown. The pigment that I used there was, uh, the pigment that I used there was uh, Driscoll. Uh, flesh tone pigment, detail Driscoll pigment. All right, so now I'm gonna grab Sunrise Yellow right out of the bottle around the actual image. It yellow, has a yellow, um, a little yellow tint to it. Lightly, don't really be too concerned about how it's going to turn out. Now we'll go back in and add a little more value. Now we'll go back in and add a little more value to the lips. Create some of the darks in there, bring out some prominent colors. So, what I'm using is Wicked Red, Opaque Wicked Red. Then reduce it and uh, straight out the bottle. I'm just using it very subtle. So give it somewhat of a pinkish tone. Keep the red subtle when you go in it. The reason it's coming out really pinkish is because it had a pink underbase with a white sprayed over it, as you've seen earlier. It creates the manipulation.
Very, very convincing. So now that we got that basic pink down, we got the red that we need for the lips, just enough. So I'm going with an opaque sky blue background. I'm going to fade it down, we'll put it up here, this color is very opaque. Um, so if you want to reduce it, it's fine, it's no problem. Me, I just go out of the bottle. I really have no problem. I'm just gonna put a little bit, not too much. Um, I mean, even with all my colors, I still lay down, you know, not too much, and I put a little bit in my gun. I really don't put in too much, um, just to economize paint and save the hassle of cleaning it. You know, especially when changing colors, because all I use is one gun. I don't use two or three guns. All I use is one gun. So. Spray, when you spray, spray it away from the picture, angle it. Because the white is so prominent, like the like the, um, the sky blue is so prominent, like the white, that um, sometimes overspray will naturally just drift off onto the actual portrait on like dark sections. So basically, what I'm doing is laying this down first, then I'm gonna go back with the black, fill in all the black with the hair, and um, fill in all the black with the dark brown that I laid down. Then I go back in for the next step and show you guys how to really make a portrait pop. So now what I'm going to do, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the hair. Um, what I'm going to do is reduce the black and reduce it with the same consistency that you would reduce, reduce the white. Pouring your reducer first, wicked reducer and wicked black. I put a pretty decent amount because the black is so prominent that even if you have even if you have a pigment that's so light, um, it'll still show up regardless, no matter what. I put just the right amount, estimate. Not as much as the reducer, but just enough. When you reduce your black, don't reduce it so much where it's not as transparent as most of uh, the Kratex colors that come already. Make them a little more opaque, but you still want it to flow enough to lay down, but not as op opaque as it actually is. Just lay down just a just the right amount. Should work out well. I start off the right side. Lay my values. It's gonna be very washed out and light. That's what you want at this moment. You want it washed out and light. So the reason I'm doing it light is because the further you look black, the further you look back and focus on one image more, like we focused on all this detail within the center of the image and the hair is all blurred off it's basically creating a hue so the hair is blurred off and you want to remain you want to keep it blurred and consistent with the rest you don't want to add too much detail we're going to add prominent detail within the center and the inner um, lines of the hair but the inner strands of the hair but you don't want to build that up so much at the end and the reason I reduce my color and make it light is because um, the further you look, the lighter the color gets. So it really creates that depth of realism. Yeah. It's good to uh, manipulate certain strands very lightly, of course, but keep it subtle and also keep it uh, keep it blurry, keep it fuzzy, not too sharp. Not until we get to the real sharp areas of the hair. And we'll do that with. Uh, Opaque black. I'll explain that in a bit. And just lay this down. Wrap this up. Now move on to the right section. So I'm going with black washes. Oh, should I explain right now? Mm -hmm. All right. So I just finished. Put it in the background. Um, before that, I reduced it. I reduced the black and based out the hair. What I'm going to do now is going with a darker black and really draw out the hair and simulate some of the strands to make it look realistic. 
This is not essentially an opaque black. I'm gonna go back with the opaque black after I finish this. But this particular part of the picture is blurred. So I'm gonna be using soft dagger strokes to achieve that blurness. The way I achieve my soft dagger strokes, I usually pull my gun a bit away from the shirt and continue doing the average dagger stroke. Hair is imperfect, so don't try to make it perfect. While I gradually move up, hairs get more predominant, start looking more realistic. So what I do is, instead of pulling away, I pull forward to make the hairs look sharper. That gives it the depth of realism. What I'm doing is uh, laying it down real softly, just uh, achieving the blur that actually shows. And I go up here, do some strands here and there, not too much. Softly, not aggressive. It's good to overlap it if you want to get a darker pigment. Now up here I'm doing a little strand so I'm still keeping them subtle. Not going too prominent with it. Not going too hard. Doing strands. This side seems to be less subtle, more sharper. When doing strands, make sure you keep it light but still keep it radical, imperfect. That's what you definitely want to achieve when you do strands because it creates the naturality of hair. Blending in, layering. That's all we're doing. Slow with the slow. Try to adjust yourself to work at a steady pace, but still keep a, st uh, a subtle flow and sticky time it will be worth it now what we're going to do with this opaque black we're going to go back into it but we're not going to cover up the whole head like we did just there with the other two layers we're going to come back and actually make some strands and leave some spaces open Take your time, be consistent flow. Basically what we're popping out is we're drawing around what we see to create manipulation of strands, but not just one or two strands, a whole group of strands. To really make it seem convincing to the human eye.
Uh, so now what we're going to be doing is moving up and um, throwing a dark cast of shadow around this area. There's really not much to manipulate. Put a little strands here to show that it's actually something. And it blurs off a lot over here. So what we're going to have to do is really darken that area up. What we're going to do is blend the black back over here, still create that subtle look. We're not really going to do any strands and manipulate anything. Not up here, not in this section of that. We already did that with the past layer. Work our way down, leave some spaces open. We're going to come back and fill in some empty strands when we come back with the white. About to finalize the black, got a few more details to wrap up. Our next step will be um, bringing out highlights and the features such as nose, the eyes, the lips. Alright guys, we're about to finalize the black, and then we're going to move to highlights, and I'm going to also focus on the eyes in the next step. We're at the last stage of the shirt right now, what I'm going to be doing is pulling out some highlights with the reduced wicked white. Same consistency as the first one, and afterwards I'm going to touch up the eyes. So basically what I'm doing right here is bringing out some of the real light areas in the, above the eyelid. It's like some of the prominent lighting areas that it really shows in the photograph and really brings that certain area of the face to life. Don't be so aggressive on it, just keep a light hand, don't be afraid, go with the fluff. Same thing I talked about earlier. And basically all we're doing is um, going back over the textures we already made very lightly. I just follow everything you basically did earlier, all the textures, just follow your textures and just highlight in the areas that they show in the photograph. Keep it subtle. Reduce with the same consistency as the beginning. It's the first reduced white that I had. Now 
Make sure your tip doesn't dry either. Just check up on it. Make sure you got paint as well. Sometimes staying on a lot of detail. You actually lose track of how much paint you have in your gun and whatnot. And the, you know, the needles dry. Because that can cause spitting and then you got splatters on your portrait and you definitely don't want that. It's always good to go back in and check. Make sure you added highlights in the right areas. Don't overexpose the highlights either. Because they'll build up on you eventually. And it won't really look as well. And the details won't pop out as much. We're about to move in the section of the nose. Um, basically, you want to keep the highlights subtle. Towards blurry areas. Because the nose is much more blurry, so it's much more softer. There's not much detail. But you still want to keep it subtle, but you still want to keep it, like I was talking about earlier, um, consistent co consistent with the flow and keep your trigger back not too far, but just enough. Just like we do actually do the textures and pull away from the shirt. So you can still add some form of texture, but they'll be just bigger, softer textures. And really creates convincing results. And now we're moving to the right cheek. I want to do the stipple technique that I explained earlier. And also highlight some of the actual textures that you did before. Because you don't want to make it seem too off. But actually, Creating the stipple technique, aside from the texture that you already did, will build more texture in certain areas. Keep in mind that uh, most of these textures are building up against each other, especially down here in the lip. I see I didn't put much texture before, so I'm just building up more texture with the white highlights that I see in certain areas. You don't always have to go back and highlight every little area. Don't kill yourself over it. Basically for uh, the cheek area, seems like there's a lot of drag dagger strokes. So what I do is work in tightly and then pull away, which creates a faded dagger stroke. And then on top of that, I'll create my stippled texture technique that I explained earlier. Just to build more texture. You don't have to do this for all the areas when you're highlighting. Just certain areas when the texture feels like, you, when you feel like you can't see the texture enough. If you already build on top of it. It's like jumping around sometimes. Nothing wrong with that. Keeps you from getting bored. It's 
So it is a time consuming method, but it definitely works and it's way more efficient than sitting there for 60 hours. As you see here, there's a real prominent highlight. You definitely need to capture that. There'll be certain times where you won't see such a prominent highlight like that. So it's definitely important that you capture that, that exactly like it is. Because it really brings character to the face. Just that one prominent highlight right there. Little stuff like that, that really bring out like especially the eye and the certain characteristic in the area of that one place in the portrait you definitely want to make sure you get that locked down don't worry if certain colors when you lay the highlight down don't worry if certain colors don't look the way they do at the end we'll do an actual one color wash which brings all that together Wash should take no more than five minutes, not even less. The last thing you want to do is really rush through it. What I'm doing is a little stipple technique on top. This is a really good form of manipulation. Increase density inside the lips as well. Where the shadows casted. Ah. Sorry, photographs will play with you. I mean, it happens. Photographs are actually flat as well. What I'm doing is actually actually adding more light than it actually has to make it pop more towards the sense.
Right now I'm basically laying in. The valley is in the eye for the white. Since I have it, I might as well. I'll go back into this right after I finish the forehead. There's not too much detail on the forehead. You can just go very soft. Basically just washing over the details we already did. And there's any really prominent detail on the forehead when you move up to this section. Then make sure you grab. Make sure you definitely paint the highlights in those really bright areas. You can't miss them out. Especially the ones that accent his face and that actual emotion. Two quick dagger strokes if you need to. I'm about to wrap up the top of the forehead and then I'm going to do some highlights on the hair and then I'll go back into the eyes and add the values and the colors and really make them pop. Highlights and so making some other subtle hairs pop out a, few, a bit more. So what I'm doing now, I'm going back to the left side of the face with a couple strands, a couple highlights in the hair, make it feel more realistic, make it seem more realistic, make some darker hairs pop out more, just add some value to it. As you get closer to the blur, still want to keep it subtle. Just make the lines thicker. So it actually did look like they're blending into the blur. Go back, fill in some of the strands. Don't make too much. Just make it feel right, make it work right. So what I'm gonna use for the eyes is a wicked blue. It's uh, somewhat transparent. It's very good for creating subtle blue. It seems like for the portrait that I'm doing it has a subtle blue towards it, and it's really good to achieve it with this color because it's not as it's not as opaque. 
It's really transparent and flows very well through the gun. Right out of the bottle. Don't use it so aggressive. Just keep it simple, keep it subtle. The color's transparent anyway, so it'll work well. My next color would be Sunrise Yellow from Kratex, straight out the bottle. <clears throat> I'm going to spray it on the inside and blow it out to the blue. Now I'm going to grab straight out the bottle Wicked Red and do two blowout dots right in the middle where the pupil usually is. You don't want to make them too big. You still want to keep them soft. Let it sit for a little while. After it's healed, focus on one individual eye. Eye is one of the most important things in the feature of a portrait, if not the most important. Just try to simulate what you see on this eye separately. And focus on the photograph, not what you have next to you, which is the other eye. And usually the blue tint on the eye in general is an occurrence of darks of shading on the right eye. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the black. I'm go off sensor with people that would fade it in too much. Still wanna be in comparison. To the picture. And of course, there's always going to be a hint of shade above the eye from where the eyelid is sitting over top of the eye. So you're always going to have that. Even if it's subtle, you'll still have it no matter what. What I'm going to do right now is capture the yellow inside the eye um, with an opaque yellow from Kratex straight out the bottle. Just be very subtle with it and um, take your time to overlap it. It's going to take a while but it'll overlap. This is just to really bring out some of the yellows that were already in there. As you see, as the yellow hits the blue, it creates a greenish tint, which is common. It's alright, just keep going. Keep overlapping. Color's so thick that it'll eventually just overlap.
Now move on to the next nine digits. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna cut back with the reduced white that we had earlier. It's best if you angle the airbrush gun away from the actual area that you're cutting back. That way you don't get no overspray in that one area. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to go back in and I'm going to add a highlight to the eyes. I'm going to cut back here first. Just make sure y'all guys can really see. This is the same reduced white that we had in the beginning. So make sure you mix a pretty good amount. Now when I go back into it, I start on the right eye since I'm closest to it. I start on the top. Take my stuff down. So what we're doing with the black, really going in and popping out some of the details. Real, real subtle. The reduced black should be enough to create that subtlety. But don't be aggressive with it because you won't get the same consistency I'm getting right now. I'm going, going back inside the eyelashes, popping them out more. Create a more natural feel. Towards the sense makes it easier. I'm gonna add some eyelashes.
just about wraps it up. My name is Ariel Colon. Stay tuned for more DVDs at airimagination.com. That's another DVD wrapped up. The portrait's incredible. You get more DVDs at airimagination.com. I'd like to thank Craig from Createx for supplying the paint for this DVD. Also, any of the products that we use, you can go to bearair.com and purchase um, anything from airbrush paint to airbrush guns to projectors. See them at bearair.com. Until the next DVD, I'm Ray Sierra. This is airimagination.com.